Just for the record, it's a zoning board meeting, uh, Monday, January 22nd, case number one, 870 Temple Street. Okay. Uh, thank you all for coming. Some of you were here before, but I'm sure we had some new faces too. The procedure we follow is we have the applicant make their presentation, uh, you know, without any interruption. I then read into the record some letters that we have received from town boards. We then have uh, questions, comments from members of the zoning board to the applicant, and I will then go out to members of the public for your comments and questions. So just bear with us and, and let's, let's get everything on the record. So since this is a hearing, uh, it's almost of a judicial nature, uh, we ask that everybody take an oath. If you just all raise your right hand so you can participate, do you solemnly swear the evidence in this matter should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, who is representing the applicant, Mr. Garvey? Yes, I am, thank you. Uh, Carl Garvey, representing uh, Hamlin Orchards, LLC, also present tonight are the owners, Carlos Sierra and Eduardo de Oliveira. Um, the property in front of you is located at uh, 870 Temple Street, formerly owned by the Hamlin family from 1947 to 2022. Property contains 5.14 acres and has a single family dwelling constructed in 1948. Property has 147 foot of frontage along, uh, bed, uh, along Temple Street and the property is roughly 720 feet in depth. The property lies in both the uh, general business zone, uh, approximately depth of 150 feet deep, uh, and the rear of the property is in the residence A1 zone. Uh, property is bordered on the north by Temple Street, on the east by property of Ann Nugent, on also some additional homes on Joyce Terrace, homes on the west by Sportsman's Trail, and to the rear is, is vacant woodland. Um, previously, in August of 2022, the proposal uh, was in front of the board for four uh, three-unit buildings that traverse the property. At that time, the proposal was withdrawn based on comments at that hearing and at a recent planning board meeting. The project has been designed uh, with a single building containing 12 units uh, of two bedrooms. Uh, that will be located in the general business zone. Um, the uh, access way will go beside the building and feed to a parking lot in the back that will be partially within the general business zone, partially within the residential zone. The building itself at its closest point at the front will be 30 feet uh, from Temple Street. Um, it will be 30 to 56 feet from the Nugent property. It will be uh, 35.6 feet to uh, 60 feet from the Courtney property line. The front and setback, a front and setback variance is required for multifamily use. Um, it should be noted that the general business zone is the only zoning district that allows a zero setback from street and a zero setback from property lines. Um, the building is a two-story building with six units on each floor um, and is 54 feet wide at the, at the front and 128 feet in depth. The topography on the site slopes basically from 124 to 103 in the wetland area, almost a 22 foot drop um, in elevation. Um, utilities for the project will connect to the existing utilities uh, in Temple Street being the sewer, water, uh, electric and gas. Drainage from the paved areas will be collected in the catch basins uh, along the access road as well as catch basins uh, in the rear of the parking area that will uh, dis 
charge into a uh, subsurface uh, infiltration system within the parking area. Um, Mark Alenka, professional engineer for the project, will address drainage uh, at, a, at a later point tonight. Uh, the project will be need will need to be filed with the Conservation Commission and DEP as construction will lie within the 100-foot buffer zone. However, there is no proposed altering of a wetland on this site. Lighting for the project will be a lamp post uh, along the back of the parking lot and a couple also on the access road with uh, building direct lighting uh, on the sidewalk areas around the building. Uh, buffer zones with fencing and plantings will be along the entranceway along the Courtney property, proposed fencing and uh, plantings, evergreen plantings along there, also evergreen plantings also along the Nugent um, property line there. Um, based on getting back to the, we, we did reduce the size of this building, uh, I believe around 15 feet in depth, uh, reduced the width of the building, uh, reduced the parking lot that went out into further out onto the property based on the, the comments that were made uh, by the planning board uh, and we reviewed most of the comments that were in the minutes from the last hearing of this project and we tried to address those uh, in this uh, redesign um, and our feeling is this is probably the best use of this property uh, and based on the soils, topography, and the zoning districts in which it lies. I'll be, uh, Mark, do you want to address any drainage? Yes. Um, I can speak for you, Chris, and Mark, and I part from the design consultants. Um, <clears throat> the, the existing conditions of the site is that all water from 876, 874, there is mostly a ridge from Sportsman Trail. All water from this area goes back towards the that street, and then the high point is over here at the north east northwest corner of the property at 124. All water ponds over this area, which eventually stages up and goes into a bigger wetland area on um, down south. Um, all the areas of pre-development and post-development, um, peak runoffs and volumes of our site is being contained be all between all the two year and 100 year storms. So all volumes that are being produced from our impervious area is being contained on our site. We're mitigating everything from what we're developing under the subsurface mm -hmm. system. And only on overflows and aerials where water will overflow into the bigger wetland area. So between the two, the two year storm and the 100 year storm, um, we are mitigating all the volumes based on soil hydrology of the soil, um, based off impervious area that we're adding, and based off of um, the amount of rain intensity that we get. I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Could, could you though just explain uh, while you're up there, yeah. Yeah. just how, where the drains, what's well, catching the water and it, putting it in the underground yeah, system, yeah. also any roof uh, any capture of the water yeah. from the roof so all the water from the roofs are being collected on downspouts which are connected to a yard clean out which then goes into a deep sunk manhole which provides pre-treatment even though it's not required for mass dp standards however we're still doing that in order to make sure we don't have a lot of sediment going to a wetland um based based off of the roof and then on the on the roadway, on the road driveway that we're putting it in, we're collecting everything on deep sump catch basins, um, which provide um, four foot sump and enough volume for all the sediment to be accumulated there and not have pollutants going into our wetland. And then all of all of these catch basins connect to um, what we call a pre-treatment discharge manhole, which is before it goes into the actual subsurface system to have another another set of structure to provide pre-treatment before going in subsurface system, which will then infiltrate to the ground. 
Um, the subsurface system, the ground of the system is where most of the water usually infiltrates to. About 80% of the water infiltrates at the bottom of the system. Um, the bottom of the system will be at almost the same elevation as the existing lot topography. So there won't be any change of, on where water will be infiltrating to as far as the elevation um, given the existing topography. And then on, on, these, on these overflow scenarios, the system um, will have a, a flared end section that will discharge to the wetland. And then from the wetland, on bigger storm events, the wetland usually stages up. Um, and then it discharges at about 106 contour. I have some. <clears throat> I have a contour map from uh, MassGIS that there's the bigger wetland area that I was referring to, right in the south end portion of our water all of our developments over here. So essentially this water stages up until it can get to this bigger development area. So anything that we develop here, given the fact of how much development we do or we don't, does not affect how some of the Joyce Terrace um, lots can get inundated by this lot. But given the circumstances, we understand the circumstances of all the lots on Joyce Terrace, so we are providing more than 100%, um, 120% about volume of what's really required per mass DP regulations. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gabi, anybody? Uh, no, and discuss the uh, maybe discuss the uh, the uh, appearance and yeah, I mean, lay, did, layout of the building. I mean, we do did show oops, uh, on we we did a blow up of just the front portion that we're developing for easy, easier looking. At. So it, if you look at this map, it looks like we're developing 100 percent of the site, and we're only developing uh, 15 to 20 percent of the site. Um, we do have, um, as far as, like I said, it's, it's, it's a 12 unit building, six units on the first floor and six units on the second floor. Um, there is an access walkway that goes around the building from the rear parking lot. Uh, the building from the street, this is a new building. This is looking easterly on, uh, on Temple Street, uh, looking closely at the Nugent house next door. Um, and this would be the layout of the buildings uh, that have a unit here, a unit here, then a, there's a space in between them. Uh, and uh, design, this is the front of the building, looking at it from uh, Temple Street. Uh, the height of the building is around 32 feet. Um, which uh, 35, 45 feet is allowed in this zone. Uh, the uh, multifamily unit, however, is dictated at 35 feet. And the uh, unit um, multifamily pot. Um, and I believe I sent you all copies of the actual floor layouts, but that's okay. just. Yeah. Is it, uh, will there be a basement? To no, no basements. No basements, okay. Um, and Mr. Garvey, just to kind of conclude the presentation, can you just walk us through each of the zoning provisions that have been cited and whether it's a special permit or a variance or a site plan approval that's at issue for each of those so we know exactly what relief is, is being sought? Yeah, uh, I applied for a variance for section 240-5.4A, which, which is a use variance. For multifamily, okay. Um, for uh, and that's because of the use of the uh, residence A one zone, right? I mean, it'd be a. The it's, it's not allowed in general. No, okay, not allowed yeah. in general business. Yeah, okay. For both zones. I, okay, I, I for both. Say. Section two forty seven point three C one is fifty feet, feet from property lines, and uh, C two is fifty feet from the street line. The street line. Uh, we've 
got 30 feet from the front of the building. Uh, the property line to the new gym would be 30 feet to, I believe I said 56 feet, and this one is 35.7 to uh, 60 feet. Um, then in section 247.3D is also under the under that same section, uh, and that's uh, eight units. Uh, we're asking for 12. Max is eight per build per building. Per building, correct. Okay. And again, the, the side setbacks. I, I missed that. Can you go over that again? With the the side setback provision is in the bylaw, and what you're seeking. <coughs> But, I mean, side setback meaning the the two lots to each side of you on Temple Street. Did you need a, a variance from that? Yeah, for for for, for multi use, we would, it would be uh, twenty and fifteen. Twenty feet on the left side, fifteen feet on the right side at its closest point, and twenty feet at the front. But that's... Well, you have more than that, don't you? Uh, I'm not following you. <laughs> you need 50. You, oh, I'm sorry, you need, you need 50. Well, for multifamily, yeah. That, I mean, that's that's all right. Yeah. You need 50 and you're as close as 20. Yeah, uh, no, thir uh, 30 on uh, Nugent's side. Okay. And 35.7 on Courtney. Okay. And the, and the variances that I'm asking for are ones that have been done to just about every multifamily okay. permit that's been uh, done in this town. I mean, if you look at the recent... Uh, 12 units, same building that was on Bedford Street. Uh, they had a 29 foot setback to the property line, to the street line, and 13 feet to an abutting property line. Um, just about every multifamily complex um, has that same variance. I mean, if you take Auburn Builders, 40 buildings that are only 19 feet from a property line when they should be 50. Um, it's typical of a lot of these. Uh, the building next to the fire station is very similar to this. It's in the same zone. Um, there's setbacks, uh, which, which is actually has 24 units. Um, and is less than us. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gavi. Thank you. So I'm going to read letters into the record, have questions from the, from the board, and then, as I said, then we'll go to the public for your questions and comments. From the Whitman Planning Board, at the December 12, 2023 meeting, the board reviewed the plan for 870 Temple Street. The Planning Board recommends denial of the requested variances due to the size of the lot being too small for the proposed project. The board also has concerns about the lack of egress for the fire department and that the requested setbacks would not be uniform with the surrounding buildings in the area. Adam Somerville, Chairman. From the uh, Fire Rescue Department, the Fire Rescue Department has no objections or concerns to the submitted proposal provided all applicable fire and building codes are met. Sincerely, Timothy Clancy, Fire Chief. And from the Board of Health, the Whitman Board of Health has no objections for the petition to Hamlin Orchards LLC for a special permit from Section 245-4A, a variance from Section 247-3C1 and C2, Section 247-3D, and site plan approval from Section 247-2, as the applicant wishes to construct a 16-unit apartment building, which was their initial proposal. Uh, containing 12 two-bedroom units and four one-bedroom units for the property located at 870 Temple Street. DPW records indicate that this property is connected to municipal water and sewer. Sincerely, Daniel Clancy. Uh, just getting back to the fire chief's letter, he called me uh, earlier today because he could not, he had a conflict and could not be here tonight. He did have a question about the um, 
is he wanted to make sure there was a 24 foot turning radius at the ends, at, you know, at the driveway and within the parking lot. And it wasn't when he looked at the plan. It wasn't clear the the. It's, it's on your plan. It wasn't. It was left off the other plan. Okay, so, so that's why. Uh, so does it's it, uh, it says twenty four foot aisle, and then these are twenty. So, so it's twenty. It's twenty twenty four feet. This whole length. The, and the, this whole length is twenty four. The feet. aisle is. Yeah. And what's the um, the driveway from Temple Street to the parking area? Is, how wide is that? Uh, the paved area. We've we actually cut it down to twenty feet with a two foot Cape Cod berm okay. on each on each side. But once it goes into the parking lot, then it's twenty four feet. Correct. And, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Piccoli, do you have bill inspected? Do you have comments or questions to? Well, other than. You know, when they, when they come to me for, for a building permit, if it gets to that point that they need all applicable um, building codes, um, I'm not going to speak for the fire chief. Um, I think it would be helpful um, if the vehicle with wheelbase was, was shown on here for turning radiuses and whatnot, um, whether they can come around the, the right-hand side of the building, well, looking from the back, the right-hand side of the building. I don't know. Can, can a vehicle get through that? Other side of the building, or only on the 20-foot wide driveway. Is there is there pavement on both sides of the building? No, there's no grass. No, there's only one. There's just one just way one. In. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I can see it in the color now. Mine's not yeah. colored. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, like I said, I'm going to wait to see what the board has to say before okay. I have any further questions. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll go to the board then, Mr. Andrews. <clears throat> I just have a couple of questions. Um, uh, the utility is going to be on the ground. Yes. Yeah. Everything will be on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the parking space is 10 by 20. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's noted on the plans. Uh, 10 by 20, typical. 24 for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, all those parking spaces are in the rear, is that right? Correct. Right. Uh, is there an allowance for uh, visitor parking? There's two extra spaces. Yes. We're required to have 24, we have 26. All right. uh, that's all I have at the moment, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Carmen? Thank you. Um, subsurface drainage, um, is there a maintenance required on that? Yes. Uh, no one then was provided. Uh, an operation and maintenance and long-term pollution prevention plan was provided on a stormwater report that was submitted. Yeah, so yes. how often does it have to be maintained? Um, that, if I recall correctly, it has to be maintained every six months, the subsurface system, and the manholes every three months. There is a... Required inspections on the drainage structures that includes catch basins, manholes. Um, we do it quarterly, and then the subsurface system we do the frequency inspections yearly. And what happens if that's not done? Um, if that's not done, um, conservation commission can file a notice to complete those. Well, who monitors that? Um, EPA, MSDP. DEP is going to come out and check to see if you're maintaining it. So, right. I guess the question I have is that I, I know that the subsurface drainage requires maintenance. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody's even doing it. So right. How can we ensure that they are kept up to standards? Yeah, um, they're going to be kept up to standards. One thing <clears throat> is we over-designed the system. Right. So we're taking into consideration some of the things that you've mentioned. Um, let's say if the system is not really being maintained as required, um, we have enough volume to take care of that as well for the lack of maintenance. So if it's not maintained at all, then it will fail? Um, it fails to a certain point, but it will take longer than usual to fail. Thank you. Yes. Um, well, one thing, Bob, on that is 
In, in the order of conditions that go through the Conservation Commission and DEP, I mean, that is part of the order. That, yes. and they, it's part of the order of conditions that gets reported at the Registry of Deeds but and, that could, and should the also, DEP. That should also be part of our conditions as well, right? That it goes in front of Conservation Commission? Yeah. No, that, that we have that as part of our decision if we decide in favor of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, is how, how tall is that, the tallest point of that retainer wall? Uh, um, 13 feet. 105 to 118. Right. And are you going to be the designer of that? Well, sir, it, it is on the, it is, we already have it. Yeah, I saw the detail. Yeah. So who's going, to, who's going to oversee the way that that's constructed? Our structural engineer from MP Design. You will have a structural engineer yes. watch over it? Yes. As you're building the wall? Yes. So they'll see it before they start? Yes. How high is that wall, Bill? I'm sorry? How high is that it's wall? 13 feet. It's going to require a building permit. Yeah, yeah, that'll be part of the permitting, and then the building inspector will get It um, runs roughly from 5 feet to 13 feet. Yeah. Um, next question is 10-6 um, in our bylaws requires a 20 foot buffer. Um, and I don't see an exception for that, for the six foot stockade fence. So, um, and I'll read it. But, um, I don't know if you, yeah, you do. It should be um, 240-10.6A1. And it says, um, well, A says where business apartments or industrial uses adjoin existing residential or residential districts, whether developed or not. <coughs> Adequate buffering then goes on to say that it's going to be at least 20 feet in width. And it talks about plantings and all that. Um, it does say that a solid six foot fence in height complemented by suitable planting. Is there a fence shown at the proper line? Yeah. It's on both sides? Uh, this one actually has a fence. Oh. This already has a fence. Um, well, I mean, we can put a fence on that side. But does that say residential? I think it says residential. It says district. business apartments for industrial use. Yeah, but what is a bus what? That's your Adjoin existing residential properties. Properties of districts. Properties. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I know that you're in general business. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying that. No, okay, yeah, so, right. You so, know. I, you know, and, and I do notice that driving around town that some of the stuff that's been approved. Um, in this town, like, there's decks that people can see from the main roads and all that. Screening is critical on this one if it does get approved. Um, well, that's why we've done a mounting system along that. But you, you also have to remember in, the, in this zone, there's a zero setback. To probably except not. for for the bus residential. <laughs> no, no, not if it. No, not if it. Uh, you asked for variance for that. That's seven seven three. So. Um, it says yeah. if it's budding residential, a 50 foot setback is required. For what? What are you talking about? What, what are you reading for? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying multifamily. I'm well, just saying. Dimension requirements building shall be at least 50 feet from any lot line and 50 feet from any street. For, for what? That's multifamily. Oh, yeah, for multifamily, right. But I'm. It, yeah, no, but there's only, this is not allowed in general business. I know. But so I'm just saying if. If I want to put an office building in here, I can. I don't have to have any buffer zone. I can go from property line to property line along the street. Right, but that's not what you put in. So, yeah, well, I'm, so well, the other thing is you need a variance for the number of units. So um, eight is. It says no more than eight. So, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Continue. I, I, I just had a question on that. Yeah, so, I, I think that's all I have right yeah, now. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Um, well, and again, I, I, I think the chairman brought up a good point. What What are we asking for? What relief are we Are we saying it's in the multiple multiple use overlay district? No, no, no. no. Okay. It's, but it's in general business. So, so you're not applying for that. No. You're, you're not saying it's in the multi multi use overlay no. district. No. Okay. So then it would defer to the apartment, but right. Bob and just said you need the 50 foot The apartment building is not allowed in the general business zone. Unless it has a special permit. No. Under, no. The, no. Under the mixed use. Under, under the mixed use. This does not qualify under mixed use overlay anyways. 
This is in, in a building intensive area. I, I agree. Well, that was my point because there's no on street parking anyways for it. Right. There's no on street parking. So, in, well, we don't so to your point, in there's no businesses. In no, no, I'm just saying that that's why you're not applying for it. Right. So, right. this is going on just general business. It requires a variance, um, several variances. But that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Kimball? Yeah, I have a question for the uh, runoff engineer. The yes. water engine. You had mentioned that the two properties to the left on Temple Street, now the water flows onto that site. Are you taking that into consideration? Yes. Um, so essentially, we are helping the, the, the homes that are on Joyce Terrace. We're helping them by taking care of the water on our site and only discharging on very, very high intensity events. Okay, what about the water for the two units that, two residential? Two, right. Yeah. They are on a higher elevation than we are, so, so all the water from yeah. them does not affect, they're but, not. But, but is that going to run onto your property? Yes, yes. And you're going to take care yes, of it? Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, second thing is, um, Electric vehicles, I know that they're not required, but I would suggest that you put conduit in the driveway in the packet spot so we get at least some potential in the future for electric vehicles. It's some building code. That's all I have at this point, okay. Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, all I have at this point is um, all the lighting on this lot is going to not be splashing over into the neighbors. Yeah, we, we we have a there should be a note on there somewhere. Is there, there is a note. It says that they put it for the poles. Um, what about the sconces? Same thing. Like you. Yeah, I mean we have lights and yeah, well lights and I mean this is going to remain wooded in, in the right. back. No, I understand that. I see the lights marked up on the front. Right. This is light post to be placed hooded as to prevent direct light from becoming a nuisance to surrounding properties. All right, that answers that for now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Plaus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wasn't present at the planning board hearing, and I never saw the first proposal that you folks came up in the first meeting, first within this, um, this uh, request. Um, so I didn't see that. I guess modifications were made to that, and what we have in front of us is the result of those modifications. Um, I would like to know why why we're so close to the street. Um, Mr. Gardy, you showed that, um, that rendering of Temple Street, and residential, residential, and then this appeared to be in the picture, massive structure um, right on, uh, I'm going to say right at the street level, but 30 feet from the street. Um, what, for what, uh, why do we need to have it so close? Why couldn't it be pushed back 50 feet or so? It's, uh, it looks, it will look out of place in that area, there are single family, it's all single family homes along that side of the street. Um, I, I like what, uh, what you're trying to do when you, you um, when I saw the rendering of the building, you know, long and thin. So, um, but why, why so close to the street? Why couldn't it have been pushed back another 50 feet or so, so that it's just not so obtrusive? Uh, we wanted, we wanted to keep the building in the uh, general business zone, and that's the sole reason. The uh, basically, the comments from previous meetings and the planning board meeting, uh, we originally had it 25 feet back to this little bump out. We moved it back another five feet. We reduced the size of the building, um, and um, it's. Yeah. Like multi-family across the street is also like less uh, is actually less than us. Right, but those right across the street are they they're they're more single-family looking houses, even though they're uh, whatever they call them duplexes or whatever duplex. Um, duplex, but they look like houses. They don't look like apartment yeah. building. Townhouses. Townhouses. Yeah. 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 So um, it can be moved back fifteen more feet. 
Just 15? Well, that would make it 50. It's 30. Right, right. No, but I'm saying... Is that what you're saying? Is that what no, you're I'd like to say that uh, if, if... Is there a reason why it couldn't be pushed back further than that? Why is there a reason why it couldn't be 75 feet from the street? It's very expensive. Because <laughs> what? It's very we expensive to move it back. Oh, really? We were trying to keep the parking lot as tight to the whole strip. And if we move the building back, then we start disturbing more of the land beyond yeah, you. And the wetlands. And the wetlands. And the topography as well. And, yeah. and all the neighbors didn't want us. I mean, we were trying to create a buffer in here that we have like uh, 75 feet. I mean, if I push the building back, then, I mean, the parking is not going to be able to go here. Then I have to start like streaming the parking lot and then parallel to the property and start disturbing more. So uh, at, at the another, you know, at the last meeting when we had units that were down through here, mm -hmm. we had a lot of complaints from the people on Sportsman's Trail suggested to us why don't we put the building within the general business zone, uh, then this would all be left in its natural state. So that's what we tried to accomplish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was that was one question. Yeah. And then I had kind of a 180 degree view on it as well. Sure. Um, you're looking at five acres, uh, or over five acres, correct? Correct. And it was something that we talked about, I think, at the uh, at last year's hearing. Um, why not do a subdivision where you put a street in and you could put three or four houses there? And that would require, I believe that would not require any variances. It could all be done um, done based on, I don't know, without permit, without variances and without even special permits. If we put a, well, if we put a road in here, the first thing the road would be is it's going to come over here, run down along the property line, Sportsman's Trail, and put the houses out here so you have the correct yep. uh, area. Um, they didn't like it when we had it. Mm -hmm. The last time you wanted to make three, three units, three, three or four, four buildings there, four fairly large buildings. Yeah, I mean we could put a public road. Yeah. Through here with. And you could put four houses. There. By special corner, you could put duplexes. You put duplexes. Because a lot could contain twenty-two thousand. 500 square feet, but it's not, I think. So, if people in Sportsman's Trail say, I'd like to have a road right there, and we'll put all right. there. So, so are, are you telling us that this was a consideration of, that you had, um, but you felt that what the proposal you're bringing to us is, is better for the property, better for the neighborhood? Is that what, that what I'm hearing? Yes. I think this is a better use of the property out here. There are still other uses that could be easily, if you look at the zoning bylaw, which I have, which I made, all the uses that are allowed in that zone, uh, as far as automobile shops, gasoline stations, restaurants, are all allowed in this zone at zero setback. I could, I can put a restaurant right next to this sidewalk, so walk right. in, parking lot out back. I mean, that's, so I think what we're asking for, I mean, this is somewhat of a un, unique zone that there is, and I don't think the zone is where it should be in this town, okay? I don't know who put it there, but to, to say, I mean, News and Right here has, he put an addition on his house right up to the property line. Mr. Courtney's already six feet from the property line, he can, he can go right over to the property line. Um, but we are trying to be reasonable and keep it at its closest point, 30, 56 here, 60 feet near the Courtney house. In the back, it goes down to 36, 35.7. Um, but we've, we tried to take that into consideration of what we're doing and less impact on, on the rear of this property. Um, based on all the input that was put in from mostly the Sportsman's Trail neighbors last hearing. There wasn't too much said about anybody in this area according to the minutes to that meeting, nor do I remember any. Um, so we 
concentrated on this area. Like I say, originally we went in with a 16, well, the applicants went in with a 16 unit building. Um, I looked at it, I didn't like it, neither did the planning board. So at that point, I re we reduced the width of the building, which gave us a little bit more buffer zone against Courtney. Um, and we reduced the length of it, uh, which moved it back another five feet, shortened it to the parking lot, and moved it another few feet in this direction. And we're still, you know, 70, uh, 75 feet from the nearest uh, home, our uh, rear property line on Sportsman's Trail, and we're leaving <coughs> the majority of the site woodland. Um, and that's kind of the reason we're asking for the variance is based on the shape of the lot, how it's elongated, uh, the soil conditions, some upland soils, but some wetland soils, uh, and, and definitely the topography sloping from 124 all the way down to 104. Uh, so we feel that this is the best use of the property. Um, the owners might not, they might like a, another business in there, but I, at this time, this is what we're proposing. And I think it's, we did the a previous building that we had in front of the planning board was, was actually three story, almost three stories high. We knocked the story off for the other four units that were on the top floor. Uh, so the height decreased, it just, it looked out of place. And I, yeah, and I changed it. All right, let me just ask another question. Yeah. If, if uh, the frontage there was A1 rather than general business, if it was, hypothetically, would there be, would this have been designed any differently than the way you designed it? Uh, <clears throat> probably not based on the last hearing, we made it change. Um, I don't think so. I mean, general business zone, you can have uh, 90 foot of frontage, and I believe it's only 10,000 square foot lot. I mean, you could, I mean, we could have cut a lot off and, and put a business here and then put a, a road through there and, and did something like no, that. No, I'm sorry, maybe I, mm -hmm. with, with this particular plan, if, if that frontage, that frontage, 150 feet or whatever that is at front, if that was a one rather than general business, would you would you have um, uh, uh, cited that um, multifamily any differently than the way you did? Um, no, I don't think so. I like I, I remember at the last hearing there was a note made that. We did, we wouldn't we don't want multifamily in the residence A one zone, so I kept it in the general business zone. Mm -hmm. uh, whether I mean there are other projects multifamily in residence A A zone. So the fact that 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 frontage is in general business really uh, rather than A one really maybe that has no bearing on the proposal. Well, knowing that a building could be built right on the sidewalk, I'm saying I'm going to have my building back roughly, most of the building back 35 feet. I think that's m more than in that, in that zone. Yeah, but don't you think if you need 50 and you've only got 30, don't you think asking for 20 feet frontage and, uh, and, and 20 feet on the side setback is excessive? I mean, we're not talking about you're a foot and a half short. We're talking 20 feet short. Well, that, that's that's on every multifamily in the town of Whitman. To be honest with you, I don't want to go over each one, but I could. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the, the new 12-unit building that Rosen just built on the corner of Star, he's, he's, he's 19 feet from the abutting property line and 25 feet off of Bedford Street. He's supposed to be 50 on both of them. Um, well, what we were trying to do in here, like keeping the building, it was, there, it was like to condense and not disturb and preserve like 
three and a half acres of white property mm -hmm. on it. I mean, we could actually take the building out of here and make it perform with all the zones and put like right in the end of it in here. But then we will not be addressing the needs of the neighbors. I mean, we will meet all the guidelines for the zoning, but we will destroy the entire property and then we will pull like a parking lot instead of a building in here. Yeah. I mean, we, will try to, we will try to condense, make like the smaller and, and yeah. a nicer footprint on the building. I mean, we can improve. I mean, there's room to improvement on the building. We can certainly work on that. But I think like the layout, it's it's optimal for not disturbing the parcel. I mean, otherwise, I mean, we're gonna go in here to pull like this many units. I mean, we're gonna, uh, and if we go out and have to build like, you know, 2,500, 3,000 square foot homes in here, there would be not like a single tree left. No, 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 this one. Saying, this is certainly better for the people on Sportsman's Trail, but is it is it the best we could come up with for siting it there in that front? I mean, the best thing would be to build another single family home, but, you know, is, is, is that gonna happen? Yes. It's not. No, I mean, that's all I okay. That home was built in is, is old. It's it, it's had its use. It's <coughs> it's not going to stay there. But I mean, if you, I mean, fifty foot setback is was required uh, at Old Path Path. That's at twenty five feet. Mosaic on Bedford Street. There's four units setback thirty feet. Um, I mean, most of these multifamily projects are not back at 50 feet. Um, if you look at, I don't want to bring up a bad one, <laughs> but uh, if you look at Aubinville, whose buildings are supposed to be 50 feet from property lines, and they're all 19 feet instead of 50 feet, uh, and there's over 40 units that are 19 feet from a property line. Mm -hmm. where obviously, there's no 20 foot. I don't know if have anything to do with this proposal. Excuse me. Please, no one speak till you'll have your chance, so it's still off. Well, I do look forward to hearing from the okay. general public. Um, just, and just one, on, on the, in, in the present zoning, general business, I mean, if you look at all the permitted uses, uh, special permit uses, there's uh, quite a few of them that could be on the site, and I think, I'm sure, you know, eating places, serving, Beverages uh, is a per permitted use. Retail place for merchandise, office clinics, medical business, professional buildings, all permitted without going in front of the board for a, per a special permit. Uh, gasoline service station, repair garage, body shops, provided that they, there's an exception to that, but uh, garages, special permits. So there's a lot of items in here that would be more detrimental to that area than certainly than what we're showing. Okay. Because right. it is going to be built on. Okay. Uh, just a couple of questions. Mr. Garvey, at, at the, between the building and Temple Street, is that pavement? Is it grass? What What is uh, going to be there it, within the front setback that you're proposing? Right here? Yes. It's all grass. Okay. And the, we show mailboxes. The 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 that's uh, off of the driveway. I mean, it's right. actually when you look at the the, the travel way, uh, you are uh, from the travel way. You you know from the edge of the, the paving on Temple Street. You're forty five foot back at the where it projects out and from the sidewalk. From yeah. The sidewalk? Uh, from the traveled way, yeah. Is that, is that from the, the street? No, slightly four foot sidewalk. Yeah, good. Uh, so I mean, when and the we show mailbox here. That's off of the driveway. The uh, yeah, right. So so the post yeah. post office vehicle can pull in. Okay, correct. So I mean, I also have a concern about um, how how close it is to the street, maybe thinking about planting trees or something in that front area to uh, I, I don't know, to think about some way to shield it from the street. I realize the issue with pushing it back, and I, and I appreciate that you've come back with a proposal that doesn't disturb the rear of the property the way the previous proposal did. Uh, 
you're under concern. Well, we, can, we, we can put a mounding, <coughs> a mounding system in here with plantings on the yeah, front. I mean, that, that might help a little. Um, no, I, I, I appreciate that you uh, trying to leave the rear of the property undisturbed compared to the previous proposal, which uh, beyond the impact it would have had on the immediate neighbors and sportsmen's trail, I was just concerned that it, it is a downhill stretch there and you would have had to do an awful lot of land disturbance in there to to put in those structures and I for the same reason appreciate that if you push the building back now you got to push the parking area back and uh, you're even more into the hillside there I assume a, 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 a dip, a, even more of a retaining wall or a higher retaining wall would result uh, so and I, and I also appreciate the fact that you sort of turned the building perpendicular to the street um, to keep it as as now as you could there. Uh, I don't know if there's a way of designing the building in such a way that it's, uh, you know, 15 feet or so less in length so you don't need that, that, that particular variance. Um, you might lose a couple units. I don't know. With three stories instead. Well, uh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to see it be three stories. So I, you know, I mean, I appreciate they, that. They are pre-condensed units. I mean, this is like uh, eleven thousand to eleven hundred square foot units. Is nothing like a major. So uh, the, the the first floor, the first floor is entirely uh, accessible from the exterior of the building, uh, and then we have like a door on each end of the building to access the second. floor. Floor, so the second floor, the units are smaller because you lose like uh, six feet of the corridor. Uh, so, I mean, to make the building smaller, it means like you know your units gonna go into like maybe 800, 900 square foot. Uh, right. Plus, and Chip, John, the, the the existing dwelling that sits on this property is 76 feet wide. I mean, 72 feet wide. Okay, we're not in, in this building is going to be 56 feet wide. The present dwelling actually comes over into the middle of this right. uh, roadway right now, so we're moving things away yeah. from property lines. Yeah. Um, and the, so the entrance to the building for the, t for the tenants, is it mainly the, the rear entrance in the parking lot, I assume? So each, is each, each unit, each, each bump out is one unit. So there's an entrance for one unit, an entrance so like when you see like on the side, the right? Building, so like this is this is like a ground floor, one unit. This is a ground floor, another unit. This is a ground floor, another unit. And then for the second floor, you have an entrance on the front, and another one on the back. So there's a corridor in the middle of the building, and units on both sides. So there's like twelve units. So there's okay. six six units on, on on the ground floor and six units on okay. the second floor. Okay. But I mean practically. People are going to, most people are going to want to enter their units from the parking. You know, they come in, they park, they're yeah, going to so go in that, that rear entrance. We need two means of egress. All the okay. entrance of the building for the second floor people is going to be this door, but we need a second means right. of egress. Right. But for the people on the, the first floor units, do they. They are going to go walk around the building on the parking, on the side. So they can't, they can't enter their units from the rear parking lot? Yeah, they're gonna get into. There's a there's a there's a walkway around the entire building, so they're gonna walk into the walkway and then this front okay. doors. Okay. Okay. So the the rear entrance only serves the, the second, second floor. floor. Okay, Mr. Kimball, did you get? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, at this point, I I think we need to go out to. Oh, are these the are these apartments or are these this apartments? Be these apartments. These apartments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just want I, uh, the one last thing is. To emphasize, you need to go to the Conservation Commission for an order of conditions because of the proximity of wetlands. Well, that would also be an advertised public hearing, correct? And do they notify about us? Does the Conservation Commission have to notify yeah, about us? Yes, by okay. registered mail. Okay. Um, and I think the point that was made about the operation maintenance plan. Uh, I think it's up to the CONCOM to impose that condition, but I would hope that they would require that reports be filed with them 
of the of the maintenance, you know, the, the three month maintenance and six month maintenance and so forth. Um, so it gets filed with them. All right, let me go up to the public. So uh, if when I, I may, call, when I call on you, please. Yeah. Yes. Brian Courtney, 874 Temple Street. Mm -hmm. Yes, let me just finish finish my little introduction here. Please, so we keep it in an orderly fashion. When I call you, give your name and address as Mr. Courtney has done. Direct your questions to us. We'll refer them to, to the applicant. I, but I don't want to have this kind of discussion and controversy going back and forth. No Go ahead, Mr. Courtney. Uh, what's the height of the structure? It's two stories, correct? Right. What's the you overall height? 32 30, feet. 32 feet, was that right? Correct. All right, and that's going to be a... A six foot fence around the property line here. Six foot stockade fence. Yep. Okay, now is that, like here's the property line between me and my neighbor. Is this fence going to continue over to this property line, or how is that going to work on this back section? We can place the whole fence around the whole perimeter to block you and then. I was just curious. But, yeah, let me just jump in. And if I could clarify for the board, because yeah, yeah. All right, so it carries all the way, all the way. Mr. Garvey, Mr. Courtney, the board. Yeah, you know, when you say this, this, we can't know it here. Is the fence is the fence going along the driveway, or is it going along Mr. Courtney's property line? It's going. A foot off of Mr. Courtney's property line, okay. along the entire length, and along the back until it reaches the Lawrence property, and then this is this is the limit of the disturbance. So there is nothing in here. Okay, and you might as well get out where the fence is would be along the Nguyen property on the other side, H60 Temple. Yeah, the H60 also would have like that. Along yeah, there, there presently is a fence that comes off the rear corner of the property. Uh, we will be picking it up and running it out to the front. Okay. The existing fence is on your property, on the no, outside. No, it's, it's, it's Nugent's fence. It comes off the corner of his house, or her house, excuse me. All right, well, we'll, we'll see if, they're, if they are here. Any, anything else, Mr. Courtney? Uh, yes, there's evergreen trees would be planted along the property line there. In, well, no, in, inside the property. I got you, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Probably like five feet onto our property. All right. To the rear. Are we talking bushes? Are we talking trees? Uh, we're talking, um, do I have that? Um, I usually have it. Usually we put a little mounded system in. I get you. And with evergreens that are six to eight feet at planting. Okay. And I notice you've got parking lot lighting or light poles along the perimeter along my on the yeah. budding side with four. one, two, two, three. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, yeah, yeah. But these are these are shining into the, the parking area. They're not directed so to they're the not post lights? No. Well, well they will be, but they'll be directed uh, to the ground. So it's more to the ground, ground so it's on this on the back side will be blocked up. So it's more of a spotlight or a parking lot light as opposed to a post light? You know what I'm saying, right? Direct, direct lighting, they just yes, indirect lighting, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Just curious. Maybe the, which one of you gentlemen are the builder? Uh, probably do Nice to meet you. <laughs> 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 you know where I live. Okay. I'll talk to you guys, no problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your time. You, I appreciate it. Uh, before I call anyone, it, uh, the owners of the property at 860 Temple Street, I just, if they're here, I'd call on them first. But no, okay. Anyone else, just raise your hand. I'll call on you. Give us your name and address and give us your comments. Anybody else? Yes, in back. Um, Samantha Snowden, 110 Sportsman Street. Um, I just wanted to address you had asked about the why didn't he do. Um, more of a residential street, like to make a new street and some housing. Um, it was made aware at the last meeting that he was only interested in doing rental type property to keep it as rentals for income, you know, benefits for himself, obviously, versus making a neighborhood and selling them. I don't know if that means anything to you guys. But then also, if you mentioned um, all of the other properties and how they were all within the 20 foot variance of, you know, they got the um, approval on all of those. 
all of those other apartments and condos are all already next to bigger businesses, commercial properties. They're not in the middle of neighborhoods. It's a whole different feel like the ones that you was talking about Rosen at the end um, on Bedford Street there, right next to the Dunkin' Donuts. Like there's already businesses, their properties. Yes, they abut some other people's houses, but not smack in the middle of neighborhoods like this would be. Just a thought on how it's you know, changing what that street and everything else looks like. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fred Small uh, had a me another meeting to go to tonight, but he dropped off a letter, so I, I want to read his letter. I am very sorry that I cannot make your meeting this evening concerning the property on Temple Street. I would be appreciative if you could add this letter to your record. I would like to state my sincere concerns of this property moving forward. I believe there are multiple issues with, at the very least, the water tables and water runoff that would be created by a large amount of asphalt for parking, etc. There is also an aesthetic detriment as to the size and scope for not only my neighbors, but myself here on Hilltop Road. I do understand that the property is zoned commercially. However, I believe the use which is being proposed is not conducive to the character of the property, the street, and our section of town. And again, that was uh, Fred Small. Uh, anyone else wish to speak? Yes, sir. <coughs> Can I have your name and address? Sir? I will. Yeah, let me get up first. Yeah. Um, I'm Alan Mole, 72 Sportsman's Trail. I got a couple questions, just to clarify. The, the parking lot, 72 Sportsman's Trail, the parking lot, do we need a variance for the parking lot because it's in a residential zone? It, I, I looked that up, it doesn't address it. Yeah, I would say it, it, it does because it is serving the, it's basically serving the building and the adjacent zone, so. Right, but it doesn't address it specifically as a parking lot in residential A, residence A1. Right. It does say in the bylaw that any, <clears throat> any less restrictive area can expand to 30 feet into a more restricted area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 30 feet of that is allowed in our bylaws. Um, <coughs> I would have to leave it to the chairman the chair to decide whether or not that parking lot needs a variance. Because um, it is a parking lot in a residential yes, it is. zoned area. It's not in the business area, it's in a, it's in a residential area. Well, we have asked for variance for the use. Yeah, so I, I think that's part of the use variance yeah. is the parking lot in A1 as well as the, yeah. the building and the general business. Is that area. on the the exception on the zoning requirements that he's asking for? Well, the use, he's asking for a variance for use. So, so in general business, a residential apartment building is not allowed. Okay. So I think what I'm getting from all this hearing is that, that this is a whole lot better than what was originally proposed for all everybody down there. It's whether or not, if they do this, they need all kinds of variances and whether or not we can approve it. Right. The other question is the driveway that's coming in that will lead into the parking lot. Is that driveway wide enough for two vehicles to pass at the same time? 24 feet, right? It's 20, it's at, 20. At 20 with Cape Cod Burns. Yeah, I mean, the town of Abington allows 18 foot wide travel ways, 20 foot travel ways. And Mr. Mr. Garvey, <clears throat> I'm not asking about Abington. I'm asking in Whitman, is that road big enough for two vehicles to pass? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the reason my concern is out there is Route 27. If you don't have two vehicles can pass, then you're going to have, if somebody's pulling out, you're going to have excess vehicles. Now you've got 27 lot because of cars that can't properly safely leave there. So that's... Well, I'll just answer his, his question also. Yes. This uh, Temple Street, Route 27, is considered a state highway. Uh, the uh, Mass, the uh, Department of Public Works requires any access permit has to be filed that with, with the state in which they'll want uh, two 30-foot radiuses uh, coming into the parking lot that we have and the width of the drive is 20 feet. So it, it actually has to go. Planning boards and zoning boards can't really dictate. Uh, matter of fact, the state says keep away from our highways. But they, we have a special application. It usually takes, uh, I'm doing one now for a car wash on Bedford Street that I submitted a uh, easily six months ago and it goes through different agencies before you get the permit and we would have to do the same thing here on Temple Street. So my understanding is that 
Route 27 hasn't yet been cleared. They, the they, have, they have to apply to the state for a... Uh, so that what, section has what, to be cleared before any road can delay. Curb cut. Curb cut permit. Thank you. Thank you. To cut yeah. the curb. To well, and again, I don't know if we should be calling that a road. It's an access for, for the parking lot. It's not, it's not going to be a town accepted road. Right. 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 But it's they, an access they, If it were just a, if it were a parking lot for a commercial building, they would need to apply to the state for the a The same as I have permit. for the car wash on the right. street. It has a, it's not a road. It's a driveway. So this also has to go through curb cut. That's just a driveway. Hmm. Just no driver. Oh, okay. Any driver. I, I do, I'm sorry, but I do. Go, go ahead. I have one yeah. final question. I was looking at the plans this evening, and there was talk at the end of the parking lot about snow removal, and that was a place where they're going to put the snow. Yeah. How close is that to the current um, homeowners that are there to the property? Yeah, could you address that, Mr. Gavin? What, what the provisions are for is snow yeah, removal? Show, well, we're showing it in the, in the cleared area. It's probably six, uh, 65 to Dion and 70 to Horn. 65, 72? Yeah. Would, would, would there also be snow? Would you also be pushing it off of the bottom, shall we say, of the property there? Or, well, we may be yeah, at, at, at this There's going to be a guardrail there. Not over here. We, we don't want to push it off of it. All right. Guardrail there, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. At what point, I guess I can say this to the applicant, at, at what point would you have to uh, be looking at you know, removing the snow from the area, not pushing it to the like how, how many inches of snow before you have to really clear it from the area? It, it, it's hard to say on a project like this, but I mean, it's it's a it's part of like whatever taking care of the building and make that accessible to the people that are living there. If there's no space, I mean, you get like a regular truck and you make a pile like a pile like this tall, then you cannot push it over. So now you need to start removing that. But, uh, you can take a front end loader and just pick it up and put it on the other side of the table over over the driveway. Good, yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. so yeah. Yeah, you gotta be careful on that. See. But that might get into to wetlands issues. That's going to get into wetlands if it is. Right. I mean, that, that would be something the Conservation Commission would be asking about too is right. the provisions for snow right. removal. Right. Yeah. And last question, that's yes. it. And I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. um, it's more goes to the engineer. Um, when the project starts up, if the project was approved and the building starts, I know you've got the plans for your waterway to protect the water. What protection are you going to do in the beginning as you start building this? There will be a phasing plan, an erosion control and sedimentation plan that will be shown to the Conservation Commission. And that will have to be approved. Comes, and that will also have to be approved. And that will have to be approved yes. by the Conservation Commission. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which this is, is essentially this phasing out, right? Let's say once we start the roadway, that's how we're going to so on. Yeah, I'm just yeah. following up your, your question. The, does the state also have to approve the erosion sediment yes, because correct. of the size yes. size of the project? Well, it's, it's under really one acre, so it's not going to require a full SWIP, which is a stormwater okay. um, pollution prevention plan. Um, but it will have to, will be in the site plan package that we're going to submit to DP and to Conservation yeah. Commission. Well, and, and I'll turn to the building inspector on that too. What provisions do you make in terms of? We don't want you know soil being tracked out into the street and so forth. So what do you? Well, again, those are stipulations this board can put on as far as the approval of, of, of the site plan. If that's you want to think, you know, as far as I mean, everything's going to flow down towards the Nugent's property, correct? By the topography. Mm -hmm. So yes. I mean, you're going to have to protect. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll be putting erosion. Yeah, control erosion, uh, either filters <coughs> or socks along the property line. At the entranceway for construction, we'd always put down a crushed stone entrance for the first 50 feet in, which collects mud off truck tires and so forth. Um, and then there's also erosion control that's going to go here because any work that's within a 100 feet uh, of, of the wetlands would, would also, which basically runs in this direction here, I mean, we're obviously going to have to put erosion control in this whole area, but that would be shown on a plan that would be submitted to the conservation and DEP. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, sitting down right there. Yeah, my name is Bruce Gavin, 52 Sports Trail. 
This is what I'd like to talk about the bylaws and the zoning and all of that for a moment. I don't understand why. I mean, Brooklyn's a nice little town. All towns have bylaws and zones. They're there to, as guidelines, to protect us all, as homeowners and business owners and all that. And I don't understand, and we just heard Mr. Gavi explain to us that other projects, and we all have eyes, we all see it, we drive around, every time in Whitman there's a little open plot of land, somebody sticks something in there. And then we, we talk about, oh, well, this guy should have had 50 feet too, but now there's only 19 because apparently we gave him a variance. And I know it's not the end of the world and all, but why do we even have, um, you know, these regulations and, and these things to guide us and, and direct us if we're not even going to use them? We're just going to, you know, give somebody a variance, let them do whatever it is they want to do. It's, I just don't understand that. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Brian, lot here, 73 George Stairs. My concerns were mainly about the water. Right. So, um, and I know that in your, uh, you know, in the presentation you were talking about, it's going to improve George Stairs' issues with water. And our current situation is, you know, there are properties that are very wet. Oh, I, I kind of want to maybe elaborate on that. Right now, you right. know, um, nature does its own storage filtration, and, and you're going to be, and then for his area, I don't think you're going to do any storage of it or holding back any water, right? You're going to have it just infiltrate into the ground through yes. 12 feet of fill material you're going to bring in, about 10, 12 feet. The, well, the bottom of the system will, I'm sorry. So, yeah, go ahead. The bottom of the system will be at the existing elevation. So the bottom of the system is where most of the water gets infiltrated to. So that currently? bottom, I'm sorry? Currently? Yes. It, the bottom of the system will be at about 115 feet of elevation, and the current existing topography over in the area where, where we are proposing the subsurface mm -hmm. system is 115. So that um, wherever that area of soil that if water infiltrates in over in the area where the proposed subsurface system is, is going to remain the same. You're not planning on putting a system in that will hold back water and, and gradually let it go out, but right now. I can see it's just going to be a, a flood, right? I mean, the talking system about water coming in yeah. quickly. Yeah, this system gradually infiltrates water, and um, <coughs> this system is taking care of water up to a hundred-year storm. So um, the intensity of water that we have got lately is about six inches. A uh, hundred-year storm is about seven to eight inches of rain. So the system. So let's say net normally on existing conditions as of now, right? All that six inches of water will come in here and it's gonna come and pond in here. Let's say Joyce Terrace gets some water, correct? Hmm. With this system now, we're gonna take care of all the peaks, right? All the peaks of the storm and all the volume of the storm between the two and a hundred years. So all those volumes are being decreased for, for, for installing this proposed system. So when we do our calculations for stormwater, we divide it up into drainage areas and um, we can get into it a little bit. But essentially our proposed drainage area, this footprint um, somewhere along here, this is our proposed drainage area. We're decreasing all the peak flows and all the volumes that this area is generated, given being impervious or non impervious or whatever it is, the area that's in this area, we are mitigating everything. So let, let me just to follow up. So it, 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 it's, it stores the water in the chambers. Yes. But the means of releasing the water, you're relying on infiltration rather than you know, a later release of the water? Yes, but it also provides some storage, right? right. Let's say, that's, that's let's say that getting. those chambers don't infiltrate for some reason, yeah. right? Not not maintained regularly. It still provides enough volume to hold enough water up to a hundred year storm. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Keep so, there's a few 
certified for burn pools, I don't think they're on your map in that area. <coughs> I just wonder if there's going to be impacts to those, if they're going to be changing the hydrology of the upland, um, upland portion. We did a, a research on it. We didn't see any certified burn pools, but that would definitely be a question that will probably be raised in the Conservation Commission. And then, what's your extent of disturbance in acreage? So an acreage is only 0.55 feet of impervious, so that's about 10% of the site. Disturbed land, like how much area of disturbed land? Um, so, so it will probably be about 0.6. Okay. So you're not going to get construction general permit? You, you, no, you know. no, because that's only above an acre. But, One acre, yes. Uh, general construction permit is not needed, yes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Don Quinlan, 190 Joyce Terrace. Yes. Uh, I do, I'll talk to you about it at the Conservation Committee, but I do have documentation on those certified rural pools. Okay. Um, and I do want to speak to the water also. I mean, I brought photographs of my yard. It is completely flooded. And I understand you say you're going to help us, but that's very hard to believe. Yes. So I really want to know <laughs> who is going to monitor this. <laughs> <laughs> have you drilled the soil enough? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring it up. Um, Couple of things. It's the same thing when you go to a car mechanic shop, right? The car mechanic tells you, hey, you have an issue on the radiator. You kind of have to believe his technical abilities, correct? There will be uh, another engineer that's going to review this, what we designed on Conservation Commission. It's part of the peer review process, right? Once we go to Conservation Commission, that's going to be a thing that someone else is going to review the work that we're, we're providing as proposed. <coughs> Um, the soil, <clears throat> the soil around us. I know it might be hard for you to see here, but all these, all these magenta soils and all this light yellow soil. This is from NRCS. It's a, it's a web soil survey map that a lot of engineers use for all of their design requirements. All around our site is a type of soil that's not well drained. So what that means is. All around the site, our site, all that water that's accumulating around us, it's all getting to our site, to that wetland area. So all these, all these areas from this, there's a ridge, there's a high point somewhere here in Portsmouth Trail that a little bit of water comes this way, this water also comes this way. So all these soils, they are not well-drained soils. What that means is not a lot of water gets infiltrated into them. So it makes its way to the wetland, right? Existing, the current existing conditions of the wetland is the bigger wetland area in the, the south of our isolated wetland, in order for this water to stage up, right? Water will stage up as volume increases. We have to get to a contour at about 106 feet, right? And unfortunately, the existing conditions of our site, in order to get to that elevation, part of these two lots on Joyce Terrace are below that elevation. Mm -hmm. So anything that we do, even if it's proposed or existing, right, it's, it's not going, the existing conditions not going to help you as much. But now we're taking this proposed area of drainage and we're saying, hey, anything that's in our area, we are going to mitigate. What it means is anything that's in our area, we're going to decrease the flow and the volume that's going to come to this wetland. Yes, of course, that all water that's coming here and some of the water that might be coming from these other high points can still and will still flood this wetland. All this area that's coming from these soils, the soils are not good, well drained, that's still going to come to this wetland. But in our proposed development area, and that's what MSDP requires, is that we're improving the conditions of it. So let's say in our, in our stormwater report that we did, during a two year storm, you have about 0.71 cubic feet of water per second, right? We're decreasing that by 0 .0, 0.08. On a 100 year storm, it's uh, 1.25 cubic feet per second, and we're decreasing that by 0.32. So this area that was previously, previously getting water to this location is now retaining and infiltrating the water in here prior to getting to 
this bigger low point area, if that makes sense. Okay. That, anything else? The area of the house is the only area that has like good <coughs> soil. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, right in the middle. I have a question, Sandra McCarthy, 92 Swiss and Trail. Yeah. So I am actually right on that property line down at the bottom. Um, I have been at that property for 45 years. Um, I've obviously not been around for 100 years, but I can tell you that we get quite a bit of water, um, especially running down this right there. Where, where my husband and I's home is located, if you come to my house, the front of my yard um, is, is eroded. Mm -hmm. And we fill it in every year, and it's still yeah. it's eroded from the amount of water that runoff that we get on Sportsman's Trail. So uh, that's our main concern is also like the Quinlans because they're on the opposite side of us is the water tables and the amount of waters. Um, the Smiths and um, my husband and I have wells that were which have way before we bought our properties mm -hmm. at the at the back of the properties. Um, I believe a couple of our other neighbors also have them. Um, those are certified vernal pools. So um, my concern is if they approve everything mm -hmm. and you go to the Conservation Commission and you can't do some of the hydraulics that you're talking about, how is that going to affect our yeah, so our other way the water is coming right, down? Right. Yes, go ahead. Um, so anything that we do on this site is never going to affect Sportsman Trail because Sportsman Trail is about 120, it's about five feet higher than all the topography on this site. Well, where, where I'm located, it's not, yeah. I'm not high. I'm actually, you're a, you're yeah, a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but still, anything that we do over on this area, nothing that we do over here, it's going to mostly affect you down here because you're at a lower elevation where the discharge of this wetland occurs. And a lot of this water from Sportsman Trail runs along to the south. So the runoff that you're getting in front of your home, it's all related to this pavement area. But we also have wells at the back that were dug. In the back you have wells. Back. The groundwater, it's not, the groundwater level will not change because of this development. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yes, right there. Um, Joanne Smith, I'm at 84 Sportsman's Trail. Um, I kind of want to piggyback on Mr. Gardner here. We have bylaw for eight units. So if we were to go with the eight units, that would make a small footprint all around. Then you could push the building back a little. You'd have less parking. So why don't, why don't we just go with what's allowed? Why do we have to keep pushing the boundaries here? That would be less intrusive on all the neighbors, less water, less parking, because once this is done, we have to live with the ramifications, whether it's water, lighting, trash, snow removal. So the, the smaller you can make it, the less impact on all the abutters. Well, we've tried to not put two six unit buildings in here and we've tried to do it with one building which we thought was what the board would want and what the abutters want that they didn't like it for little small buildings so rather than put two six unit buildings out front we decided to go with a two-story with 12 units. Yeah, yeah, just to clarify, the eight unit limit is per building, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, the, this is, I just wanted to clarify that. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me just ask, it, in back, yes. Durant, 164 Joyce Terrace. Um, on the parking, you say you have 24 units here? It's 20, 26 spaces. 26 spaces, though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where is the snow removal going to be again? Um, I believe that the snow removal will be again. Okay. For the parking lot, and then along the sides. <coughs> and where is the drainage for the snow? The drainage for the snow, um, that can be, we'll be addressing that once it goes to Conservation Commission. We'll drain that towards the parking lot, but we have two yeah, catch, so we'll there's two catch this way. 
There's two catch basins there. You can see the 121 to the 120 to the 119. And we can certainly that certainly confirm that there will be other structures over here. On Joyce Terrace, primarily, they're all Campanelli's. We have no cells. I don't know if you understand what a Campanelli is, but all of our plumbing, the water, the gas, it's all in the cement. Our heating ducts are also in the cement. If water, in any way, shape, or form, adds to this, and I'm talking about snow coming down these little lines, which means height to low. Okay, I'm not a rocket scientist. I appreciate every one of you. You are gifted, but I tell you, water runs downhill. I'm right here. Right. There you go. So, to me, I see a hill. I see snow that you cannot tell me that you're going to remove it or constrain it. Mm -hmm. I see parking spots mm -hmm. that you're going to have to move cars to get all the snow or else they're going to end up in your again drainages. Mm -hmm. With a 20 foot space here, with all due respect to Chief Clancy, I don't see the ladder truck coming down there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, if I may address some of this. Sure, yes, issues. go ahead. Um, snow storage issues um, will be, be talked about in the race on conservation commission again. And all these catch basins, they will they will be able to get all this water that's been drained to them. The so catch basin rock? by Mass DOT standards can take up to a, a quarter of an acre of impervious area. Um, our site only is 0.55, and we're providing one, two, three, four, five, six catch basins. So that's more than two acres needed based off of cash basis. Anyone else? Uh, yes, all the way back. Uh, Jane Rosado, 71 Sports News Trail. Um, no matter what size this gets to be, I'm concerned about the lighting. Um, is there a way so that it's maybe motion detected? So 2 a.m. it's not lit up like Dr. Shaw parking lot? Mr. Garvey, can you explain more detail what the lighting is on the site and how it differs well, from it's, a, it's a mostly, parking lot? You know, in direct lighting, it's only shining, you know, yeah. at, directed at, at the, par the parking area. Um, it's similar to what we've done in a lot of other... So are you suggesting we would oh. not be able to see those lights? Um, it'd be tough to... Well, I mean... The nearest light to, a, to the nearest house is probably 180 feet. Along, and, and we're leaving a lot of woods there. I mean, that's, we're leaving this area all woods. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> how, how high would be the, would the poles be that the lights are on, Mr. Gabi, to, to visualize it better? 12 feet. 12 feet. Well, I mean, at 2 a.m. With, yeah, with, with one off, light on it, it's not stopping. Detected? Yeah, can you? It can easily be motion detected, yeah. They can be motion detected. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's, that's a condition we could we could put yeah. on it. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'll get back. I'm going to let anybody get. Yes, ma'am, right, right there. Me? Yes. Hi, 72 Sportsman's Trail in Wolves. Um, I have some concerns in that. When I ride around the town, a lot of these properties are not being taken care of. The dumpsters are overflowing. <clears throat> we already have a, a guy on retainer to keep the mice out of my house. And I look, we're not going to be that far from this. How are you going to make sure, and how can you re put it somewhere? That I mean, this is an apartment building. It's not even a condo where somebody has some vested interest. So how are you going to tell me that this person is going to be in there cleaning the roads when they need to be? They don't. We have neighbors that don't take care of their property. How are you going to take care of the, the dumpsters and and the loud noises and all of that stuff that we have to deal with abutting this property? How is that? How can you tell us that's not going to happen? I don't want rats running through my yard eating my my garden in the backyard. I don't, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm all for nature. I love the deer running through, but what are we going to do about that? Because I go over to Williams Way and those dumpsters are overflowing and you can't tell me there's not rats and things going through that. Mr. Gabby, I, I meant to ask you, could you identify where the dumpster is in there and uh, the access of trucks to, to 
in this rear parking area that's fenced as required. Um, and it will be picked up, it'll, it'll be scheduled to be picked up. Uh, and there is a management company that manages the apartment complex that will that does its its maintenance of it. Yeah. And can I just, I just want to, I'll get back to you now. I just want to clarify because this comes up with other projects. Do you have room there for a truck to go in? I'm assuming it's like a front end load to, to go in and, and to be able to intentionally not, not have to back out to the street. You've got room to, for I mean, it to maneuver there. When those big trucks going to get in there? I mean, I see. We, he we drives have, in straight down and picks it up here, backs out. To the parking lot. Turns around in the parking lot and drives out to Temple Street. Yeah. Okay. I I wanted to clarify that. There's no there's a twenty four foot aisle between these spaces. There is there's no parking in here. This this area here that's fenced in is has been left just for the dumpsters that are there. Okay. So do, do you want to address you know the maintenance and the management of the site? I mean, we did other projects in town in the Guadalupe, um, almost like yeah. the auto body, which is like uh, walking distance from the site. Uh, and the place is kept like pristine. I mean, I, I don't know of this discrimination that like people that uh, rent are less capable of maintaining their property than people that actually own the property. I think like uh, if we sold the apartment, there's nothing that guarantees that the people that are gonna buy the apartment are not like pigs. But, but it's the landlord that you may sell it to. Uh, so, so I said again? It's the landlord that you may sell it to someday. Is he gonna maintain it or she gonna maintain the property? That's the concern. I, I think like this is, goes towards like the value of the property. I mean, you don't want it to, you know, Bob, do you the want property to, to look abandoned or, or, or just repaired. I think like we will not be here spending like a lot of time with like plans and engineering and architectural plans to do the, something pleasing if we thought like that the place is going to turn into like yeah. a dump site. I'm going to ask the building inspector, can you address what happens if uh, how how this issue gets addressed in town if, if this as far as dumpsters are concerned? Yeah. If it, well, if it becomes a health issue, the, the, the board of health can be called. But, yeah. I mean, does he have experience? How many, do we know if he has experience running properties? Do we have a history? Do we know it's how, it's, I mean, like he has businesses. That's great. That's not people within there throwing well, pizza boxes in the dumpster. I, I, I just got to. I mean, you have to understand our concerns. We're the ones I, who are I understand. living with this. What I was going to say was, he could, he could tell us, you he know. He could tell us anything. Uh, well. When we issue permits, it runs with the property. It doesn't go to the specific owner. So I don't want to give you some assurance based on his experience so when the property could be sold to somebody else and somebody else will manage it. So I, you know, I. have no recourse then. So what well, I, the doesn't same. Because the laws don't matter. No, no. Well, they, but yeah. but there are Board of Health regulations. If there were issues, complaints can be made and, and actions can be taken. Same same thing with the con I, you know there are condo associations that don't do a very good job. Right, of, right. you know, there are homeowners that don't do a very good job. Right. I see a lot of rubbish in people's jobs. We call the board help. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have you homes should. that were built there though. They didn't come in asking for special permits. Anyone else? I, did you want? Yeah, my wife. Cut, my wife cut me off. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you stationed yourself at different ends. Yeah, yeah. 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 we attack from different angles. Um, Alan Mole, 72 Sports and Trap. Just remind me, what was the height of the building that's going in, and what is the average height of a residential home in that area? Gabby, you and I can't say the height. The height of, the the height of this building is 32 feet. The height of the homes are about 28. No, most of those you are can, you can make single high yeah. people yeah, single two stories about seventeen I don't think there's many two yeah. stories right there. But they're about seventeen feet. Mr. Kimball? Yeah. Uh, if you put a two story building in with an attic, which the majority of the two thousand twenty five hundred square foot houses are in, it's thirty five feet. It's not gonna be any higher than if you put a, a two story colonial with a pitch roof on it. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe small. 
Uh, some of the houses are building now. Yes, sir, here in the corner. Sir, well, oh, we have 51 area out. Um, I really don't have a lot of skin in this game because I'm on the other side of town. Um, but it, yeah. it's interesting to hear. This sounds like it's the second meeting regarding this property. And obviously a lot of money has been spent trying to figure it all out. But would all this be necessary if just the original structure was razzed and then new single families put in place to kind of go on your phone? It would be out of the zoning. Yeah, I, I will point out the, the original house is non-conforming, so actually it still needs pre still needs zoning. Pre yeah, pre it it was built before zoning, so they'd still be needing a permit for relief from us just to put a resident no, residential structure. To put a residential home. In. Yeah. Uh, oh, we need to find. Yeah. Any, anybody else? I, I'm not looking to prolong this, but I am. I guess I'd be interested in, you know, and it came up last time, the idea of, and certainly from the last proposal, all the water and wetlands concerns were, you know, paramount, I think, in people's minds. But it also, it was a matter of the proximity of the new structures to the, the houses, particularly on Sportsman's Trail. So, you know, I'm looking at this and trying to balance you know, this kind of a structure versus preventing the development of the backland. And I'd just be interested, you know, your, your members of the public are here, I'd be interested in your comments on, on balancing that out. Because if we send them away, yeah, they could go back to another proposal to put, you know, several houses in back. And, um, well, and that goes, John, to the gentleman's comments about why there are, why there are, are variances issued. So, by right, they could put four duplexes back there, right along and, and affect everybody on Sportsman's Trail. And they could do that, I could say, basically by right. Um, but instead of doing that, they can come to us with a proposal to put a building up front, thereby leaving that whole back 40 mm -hmm. alone. But in order to do that, uh, the, the concessions have to be made by this board, taking everything in consideration that we've heard today, taking the what we think is the, what, what, what would be the best interest of the neighborhood. So that's why that's why variances get granted. That's why the relief is given for certain things. Now, we're, we haven't always made the best decisions, and we've seen some things come back, and we learn from them. But that's why. I just wanted to address that. It's, it's not... It's not because we don't care what the rules are. No, I understand. It's uh, just... Uh, okay. We trade us. Uh, I'm sorry, there was somebody... Yes. I just wanted to confirm, Jim, uh, James Quinlan, 190 Joyce Terrace. Yep. When it comes to conservation, this has to go back to conservation regarding yes. the, the wetlands and the water. Will we get notified as a butters for that meeting also? Yeah, is it the same rules in no. terms of... Yes. Feet, be certification 300 feet center. or whatever. I'm not going to hold the room hostage, but I definitely need some clarification on the drainage. Um, you, kept, I, you kept referring to that yeah, yeah. area behind my house as a holding place before it goes to 106. <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily a holding place. My backyard becomes the holding yes, place. Yes, yes. And I, I don't mean to sound aggressive, but like my backyard right now is is. I couldn't. I can't believe how much water is in my backyard now from your quote hundred year just shy storm. Mm -hmm. like the last month of rain, yeah. six weeks of rain, anyways, has decimated my backyard. So for you to stand up there and nicely, kindly say that you're going to help me, I find that hard to believe. And I do want to definitely be at this next meeting. Yeah, okay. and what I would like to, as a response to that, that there will be a, a peer. Engineer, so an outside engineer is going to review the calculations mm -hmm. that we did, and he's going to prove that, and he's going to send a letter to the conservation commission stating, "Hey, here there are some errors that we think that might need to be addressed, and here are some of the things that they did well, and they met the bylaws." So there will be conversation between an outsider consultant that's going to look at what we did. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes. I'm Ian O'Connor, 884 Temple Street. I'll be three houses down from this mm -hmm. apartment building on the street. Um, I live in a single family, a uh, single story house. My next door neighbor 
might be one and a half story, but I think Mr. Courtney might live in a one story house, so he, he would be more impacted by the hundred building. But um, I live in a business, my property is a business home. Um, I could put something there that people might not want, but I won't do it because I don't think that's fair or uh, good for the neighborhood. I, um, on my left is the um, auto body place. Um, I usually only smell from there. There's really no noise there. Um, there is a house between us, but um, anyway. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this thing's going to be three houses down from me. I just don't see the need for it. Um, I like my neighborhood the way it is with our little houses. There's only five or six of us between sportsmen's and George Terrace. George Terrace. Um, there's a, thank you. <laughs> there's a, uh, another car place on the side over where um, Joyce Terrace is. I mean, that doesn't, I don't really have anything. I know there's another apartment complex right across the street from there. And I don't see the need for any more apartments on Temple Street in that small area. Uh, anyone else? All right. Um, we're just going to get a sense of the board of how where they want to go with this. It's already a <laughs> quarter nine. I'd love to see it reduced to eight. We got units. units. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any else? I feel the same way. Yeah. I think eight units would be doable there. Um, I think the big trade-off here is that something's going to end up in this property, mm -hmm. and this might be the best thing to go there, but 12 units is success. Am I agree with that? You know, if, that would allow you to put it further back from the street, too, as well as reduce some of the parking needs. I mean, I, I do favor this over having you put in a subdivision road, and certainly I favor this over the previous proposal. Um, so I, I guess I'd like to at least continue the meeting, and you think about it, we think about it. That's that's my 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 sense that I you know I don't want to make a decision tonight I, uh, because I, I I think it's workable. I mean I I think it can be done, but I think just a little more tinkering is needed. I I I approve of the general concept of having the building up towards Temple Street, keeping the rear of the property undeveloped, uh, having the parking behind the building rather than in front of the building. I mean, you, you know, you could switch that, but I think it's much better to have uh, the building closer to the street uh, and, and having the parking behind, but that's something that could be considered too, whether that allows you to push, if you have some parking in front, would that allow you to push it back? I don't know, Mr. Kimball? Mr. Chairman, uh, if it's the will of the board to uh, go for eight units, would it be possible to increase the size of the unit, some of the units from two to three? Because everything that's being built in Whitman now is two units, and we have very little family rental units. Yeah. Something uh, to consider. Yeah, I, I would put that out as something, you know, or Something to consider. We're trying but, to reduce the overall mm -hmm. impact. I mean, and to me, that just apples. Uh, we're just mixing. Yeah, the, I, I, I don't want to. I know. I, I don't want to dictate the size of the units because number one, it'd be questionable. <laughs> so, but, but it's it's a consideration, I guess. I mean, to me, uh, to me, and and I also don't. I, I don't want. And I'll, I'll say. I don't want to go taller. I think the, the two story is versus three stories is pretty significant uh, in this area. So, well, the, we're not, okay. yeah, yeah. We're, we are two stories. Right, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. well, Mr. Chairman, to go 12 units at two bedrooms is 24 bedrooms. Mm -hmm. If you go to eight units that are three bedrooms, then we're still at 24 bedrooms. Yeah. We haven't reduced it. Well, it's the, the footprint, the, footprint the impact. I mean, I, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see this reduced to eight units at two bedrooms, 
or something along that, and just and I'm just talking about size wise and impact to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. right. We've had the protecting low parking. I mean, you can't get all that without the car. It's you know, there's only too much to spot. The parking doesn't change, the size of the building doesn't change, so that's the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If you did a couple of three bedrooms, maybe that's an option. Um, if I may, Mr. Yes. Chairman, are we talking about just sending them away to come back and think about it? And we're going to think about it as well? Yeah. Are we directing I, I, them to. I, I'm giving them a sense. The sense, the sense of the board, where the board is leaning. All right. Um, so, if I'm going to give you a sense to make the front look a whole lot better than that, it's got a doghouse in the front with a door. You can separate those windows and make it so it looks like. I don't think like everything has a financial assessment to it, and we need to take a look at that. I will be able to tell you that I'm building right now like a, a row house like the over there it's actually nine units they'll be doing in Franklin uh, and that will not be rentals and we will do that for sale we will not need a parking lot it will be parking it will be three stories because the parking will be under the unit it will be like all row houses that will, that will make on eight units it will make sense for us to do that the units are about like 32 feet wide so I mean, it would be like a little bit longer than that, but we would need no parking lot. It would be a driveway and you go straight into the unit. So we need visitor parking? You need like four or five spaces for visitor parking. Mm -hmm. right. Well, and I, I guess I, I, at least before I send him away, I want to send to the board that if the number of units that were reduced, are you at least agreeable to the concept they presented of a structure close to Temple Street, leaving the rear uh, undeveloped? Is that, uh, is that if this was reduced to eight units, I would be apt to vote in favor of it. Okay. Is that well, about ten? <laughs> <laughs> um, so all I'm saying is that if if they leave here with with the sense that we're, we want less than 12. Maybe come back with what you think will still work. Um, I hope that the, the abutters are, are happy with this compared to what was presented. And no, 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 no. So you don't feel better about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, the single story. Single. So you, the choice, choice you guys don't feel better about it, but Sportsman's Trail does. Sportsman's Trail, well, I'm not going to speak of the trail, but I'm not satisfied. But this is a whole lot better than what you've done. Wow, it's better. I mean, <coughs> the devil I mean, the pudding, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, and, and that's not what I'm saying, is that we're going to go over this because it's less intrusive to you. The, the, the fact is they still need a variance for this. Correct. And you're and still, you're still what it's going to do to you as far as water for your property, it's going to, if anything, get a little better. But this is a big retain wall back there. That's 13 yeah, feet up. I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, the, the way the rain's been lately, who knows? And that's, that's yeah, my yard never floods, it's flooded. Right. It's, it's, I got three inches of water. Yeah. But again, I, you know, I just, I just want to you know, say for all of you, and I have to, again, thank you all for, for being here, and especially those of you standing up for a couple hours. Um, but we have to compare this, you know. Yeah, they could tear it down and put up one house there. But they've got five acres of land, so that's but not what they. Five acres of land. What can you build? They could build I mean, several, can, several houses. They could, go, they could put four duplexes on there, eight units. The water that vernal pool. We're going to call it because we do have documentation. The vernal pool. The vernal pool there. I mean, the vernal pool is what it allows us to do. Mr. Garvey. Mr. Garvey. Excuse me. Let, let, let him finish making this point. Yeah. You need to talk to the board about it. Go ahead, sir. What I'm saying is, I'm not against a building. But the repercussions of any building there affects Joyce Terrace. I would love to have any one of you, I would give you a guided tour to the back of my yard, also the Dawn's yard. And if you saw the topographical, right. whatever you want to call it, the topography of the Pitch of that hill, water's coming. It's and coming down. And in Campanelli slabs, 
We have no summer. The right. water comes in, all of a sudden now we fill in all our grates, our vents in the floor, and we have to redo our house with the heating and the ceiling because we have no place to put right. it. And there's, there's two rivers. There's a river on one side of Joyce Terrace, and then there's one that runs down the back behind my house. And even on a good day, without a hundred year storm, there's water. Right. And so what I'm, what I'm saying is even without them digging one shovel, we have a water issue anyways, and now we're taking a chance. And I, I understand that, and as we've said, it's going to the Conservation Commission. But I think what we've said is, if you add several houses running parallel to Sportsman's Trail, uh, I'm sure they can mitigate that too, but I think it becomes a lot of more difficult yeah. to mitigate the well, runoff. It's usually a little more respectable this. for their own houses also. Well, then that's, that's what I've been trying to get a sense of from people. Would people rather see four duplexes? No. That's, no. Okay, that, that's what I, you know, you know we're here to, to listen to them, but we're here to listen to you too. And I'm just saying that's, the option is not a choice between one single family house in this property and what they're proposing. It's between several duplexes going into that back area versus what they're proposing. I mean, uh, we're you know, coming to in, the board and listening to all the neighbors and try to do everything that we can. And yes, we have to get a variance to point the, 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 the building over there. But we can go to the building department tomorrow with a 10,000 square foot warehouse over there and apply for the permit. And I would need not even talk to anybody. Yeah. You've got to go over site for approval. Yeah. So yeah, but it's you permitted. Know, but, it's, but it's permitted. Like, we don't need a variance. If you need setbacks to, to residential properties, you wouldn't get a building that big. Yeah. But I, 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 th I think the thousand square feet up yeah. front of the street. Yeah. That, we have zero centers. Yeah. Huh? We have zero. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Curran, yeah. Mr. Garvey, that's it's not on the table. But I, the, the point I do want to make, because some people said you've got single-family houses along here. The fact is, however, the zoning would allow commercial properties to be put in on Temple Street where there are currently single-family houses. So again, kind of right. looking at that. All right. I think I think it's time to. I'd like to continue this then. Uh, when is the next meeting? February 26. February 26, is it? Our next meeting is February 26. We have one case on there. So that fairly simple. Right. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll be away from the 15th till for a month. Okay. Well, we still would have five people then to everybody else. Would everybody else here be on February 26? Yeah. I, I think rather than can push this further. So I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to Monday, February 26th at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Moved by Mr. Chandler, second. Mr. Andrews, all in favor? Okay, so if you want to come back, it, it, you will not be getting another notice, so I'll make a note of this. Monday, February 26th, 7.30. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Take those for the conservation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we do have one other matter on here. Are the people here from 74 Franklin Street? Yes. Um, will, will the Conservation Commission be meeting before your next meeting? Even if they are, they haven't applied. Yeah. yeah. They want to get, I mean, they can go either way, but most people want to get this permit first before they go to the CONCOM. I understand. Because they got to know what it's going to look like before they go to the CONCOM. I understand. Yeah. And I, I apologize, too. By no means that I mean that you folks... You, you, you said what everybody talks about. Thing, everybody talks about and thinks about so that's fine. I didn't... But I meant no uh, disrespect. No, no disrespect. None taken. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry for this being so long. Um, I would like to know first, but I really want to. <laughs> um, should I hand these out now? Yeah, why don't you just hand them out to the board? It's going to take a while for these people to clear out of here. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do one set of these. Carl, we've got we've got another matter to take care of, so anybody can clear out of this one. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Why don't you give why don't you give one to the fire did you get one to the fire chief? What's that? Give one to the fire chief. I guess. Okay. Yeah, I'll give Because he's only has the small ones at this point. I talked to him, I talked to him. Yeah. I mean, all right, we have another matter to uh the agenda did not have the second they don't put it on the website. Wait, is it on the bulletin board? Yes. Okay. I don't know what how they do that. Okay. Let's do it. All I do is turn it into the bulletin board. Okay. I'm going to call. Call the next hearing. This is case number 19, location of property 74 Franklin Street. So this is a continuation of the hearing. It was held on. Uh, December 11th. You can't close the door. Yeah, yeah. Can you please go away? <laughs> I would have said a little more delicately than can you all go away. But. So, uh, at that hearing, just, just uh, the I identify the members voting on the, the hearing, uh, myself, Mr. Andrews, Mr. Blas, Mr. Chandler, and Mr. Curran, uh, but uh, Mr. Kimball was, was here for that too in case cases needed. So we, uh, this is for a duplex on Franklin Street, and uh, we weren't too pleased with the how it, how it looked, I think, was the main concern, and some of the neighbors had some issues as well, as I remember, with the vegetation. So, uh, who's representing the applicant? Uh, explain to us where we, where we are now. Good evening, board members. Jack Solmstein for Manuel Ramos. Uh, last time we were here, it was, it was the, what, what we interpreted to be uh, a majority opinion that the structure was more industrial, more like a firehouse, uh, not very aesthetic to the neighborhood. Uh, so Mr. Ramos went back and uh, revised the structure. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's the same square footage, uh, but more residential, more aesthetic, more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the, the real main difference is the basement from a half basement to a full basement. That's really the only right there. dimensions and the size. The elevation. Is this a duplex? Yeah. This is a duplex. This is a duplex. What was, Thank you, John. What was torn down was a two family up and down, and now this we're proposing the side by side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I just want to turn to. Okay, so there's a floor plan on the last, last couple of pages of the handout. So, just want to take a minute here. So, the ground floor has a living room, kitchen, uh, 
half bath, I guess. Yep. And second floor, so these are going to be three bedroom units with uh, one and a half, three bedroom units, three bedrooms, two and a half baths total with uh, two, ba two baths on the second floor. And what about the, um, what do you have as an attic? I mean, one concern looking at it is, gee, could it be? Just a space in the attic. Put the heat, the dog work. Okay. Uh, is there a, ba a basement to this? Yeah, full basement. Okay. And so what's the, what's the height of the proposed building? 32, that's the 35. Okay. And... Uh, so the parking you're proposing is coming out off the street and so one entrance from the street with the parking for each units yeah. parallel to the street. Would those be two two parking spaces wide? Yeah, two parking for each unit. Okay. All right. Question. Okay. Any, anything else you want to say? Another? We'll go right into questions from the board and Speed this up, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Andrews, please go ahead. These are going to be owned. Oh, they, 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 they're not going to be rentals. Oh, no, it's not rental. No, no, no. On, on. They're going to, they're going to be owned. Or Con yes. Condos. Or not that not that a condo owner couldn't rent it out, but just as a homeowner could rent it out. I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> I like the layout. Right. Uh, <laughs> too many stairs for me. <laughs> Get the elevator. Uh, Mr. Curran? Um, this looks a lot better than the last plan, so thank you for that. Um, is, is the parking going to be right in front of the units, or are you going to park either side? Each side. So that's just going to stay open? Yeah. I don't have any issues with it. Yeah. Mr. Kimball? Um, it's just a two family and the majority of the units in the area of one family, but it was a two family to begin with. So right. Family yeah. And I'll add, what was it, 10 years ago? So I did look up the, the decision that I think it was 10 years ago. The owner at that time proposed to knock down the house and was going to put up a duplex, and we approved that for a mm -hmm. duplex, and then they never carried through. Yeah, he was in the military, there was a bunch of reasons. But, yeah. Um, yeah, this certainly looks more like what I would have expected. Mm -hmm. um, it's big. <laughs> Mr. Kimball, did I call you? Mm -hmm. And I think there's an agreement with the neighbors that um, Mr. Nice. Ray wants to put up a fence on Yeah, why, why don't you go ahead and explain to us what, what other provisions you're making for landscaping, fencing? Well, we have just the fence, whatever you want me to put the fence up with the fence. Uh, we would like to have it in writing and we would like to know how high it's going to be, how long, and the retainer wall. Two feet? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I, I could get you two feet. <laughs> well, let me continue with questions. No, I just. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Kimball, did you have any? You live in the back. No more comments. Okay. Side. 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 More side. More side. Side and back. Side and back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Chandler. Side. Uh, no, Mr. Chandler. Not this time I have no comment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Flaws. Oh, I'm just waiting to hear what the uh, abutters okay. have to say. The, the only question I have is whether, uh, and if this better or worse, but it's just a different option would have been to have a um, a uh, driveway to each side of the structure with parking on each side of the structure rather than the single driveway coming in. It just strikes me that kind of creates a lot of pa pavement in front of the house. So I think uh, uh, you have grass in the middle of that driveway. Okay, because that's not what I, yeah. I'm seeing. I'm seeing it is all paved. How, how would you... Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Cummings. 
Um, I don't disagree with what John just said. What would be the problem if you put the driveways on the right and left side and have the main door on the side instead of the front? Or have a the two doors out front are bothering me a little bit, and this thing is huge. Oh, it's, a, it's a nice front, yeah. nice, front, you know, for, you know, porch or front door, too. Yeah, 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 I know, but you could have to go the side, I have another side door, you know, on the back for the, for the deck, so like, for the kid. Yeah, I realize, nice. if you it's went with what I'm... Um, you could do two driveways, both 20 feet wide, on each yeah. side. I could do that if you want. Yeah, I could just go two driveways. Yeah. So what do you think about that? The, well, they I need, like to keep my the door, the front door, the front door. Yeah, I don't have a. I mean, you know, most yeah, we have plenty of duplexes no, with two doors. Door, but I, I like your idea about having this front door. This is the driveway right here. Mm. Mm. Then I mean, then you'd have to have some sort of entrance from the side yeah, for each, that's like that's a kind right. of well, kitchen. Even, even at that, they could park over there. Yeah, and then we got enough for the walk. Space, so we could do that. No problem. Mm. I, 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 think I like the. It looks much better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just have the driveway here, here, yeah. and then they have a walkway. Yeah. Right, they can go to the front door. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, they're probably yeah. way over here anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. They got to walk to the front anyway, so yeah, that would. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. Twenty feet wide, all over the yeah. yeah. way. Yeah. 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 The overall width of the house is 48 feet. Mm -hmm. 48 feet. That's not big. Yeah. So you'd have roughly 50 feet between the two driveways on uh, Franklin Street, so they'd be spread out. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Chandler? No. Oh, okay. We, okay. Let me go out to the na members of the public, meaning the neighbors. What's what's your reaction um, to this? Um, Franklin. I do like this. This is a, this is much nicer. Um, so we're talking putting the driveways on either side of the house that's, and running them up the side. Yeah. That's, okay. How does that? And then my just for logistics. Not sure if you bust in my hangers or whatever here, but the right side elevation shows two second floor windows. Whereas the left side of the issue shows no second floor. Well, I, I, I picked it up on a stick. I didn't understand that. So, yeah, so <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, because, yeah, that's, um, no, it will, be, it will be two windows there. On both sides. Okay, okay. I'm just, that's good. just cur curious. Yeah. yeah, that's required in the bedroom. Yeah, right. And it's a full basement? Full basement. Okay. Not finished. Yeah. No. And a seat. It, it looks like the structure is centered on the lot. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you will be getting a survey of the lot, right? What? A survey of the lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you already have it. Yeah. No? Okay. I didn't know. It's, it's, it's not right? flagged or anything. No, I don't need to do no, that. Right. It's not a lot. It's not mine. No. No. It's not mine. No. That's why they cut trees down. Do you mind with what's uh, to the... I mean, you, you're on, you're the property to the right of the house as you're yes. looking. Right so the right what's side. what's on the left of the property, the, the left of your house? Again, I'm just thinking it through about the driveways and all. There's another house. There's another house. There's another house. There's another house. Okay. Their driveway abuts his property. There'll still be 15 feet away from this house. It will still be how, how far? 15. That'll, still, that'll be fine. Yeah, I think so. And you're set back. you set back 50 feet from the street. So, I I like that you you know you you do have a deep, fairly deep lot there. So I'm glad you're taking advantage of that. So you're talking about a fence along the uh, their property. Um, and is there's there's an issue with the retaining wall? Is that right? Wait, where's is there a retaining wall? Yeah. It's a two, that little two foot wall. The two foot wall. Yeah. Yeah, because all the trees that get cut down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's at the edge of the property, is that right? No. It's on our property. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Right. We took the trees down, the right. irrigation took care of it. Okay. So, a fence on their side. Were the neighbors, the other neighbors weren't here? No. 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 Is, that, is that like a... They have a fence themselves. They, they have a fence. They have a fence that goes like three quarters of the way down. Yeah. And it's their driveway. Right. 
Well, See, he's going to want to put a fence up next to our house because that's where our goats and chickens are. And an angry old man. Nile Quarry and Stones on the other side, I guess. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, I'll have a All right, we're done. I don't think we'll bother putting a condition about the other fence on the other side. I mean, you decide what, you know, what makes sense for you. But if we're a single family house, we wouldn't be talking about it. So, okay. Um, is there, a, is there a, uh, in the basement, is it a, a walkout or is there a bulkhead? No, it's a walkout. Walk There's a walkout. The in the back. Yeah, let me just get look that's, that's the dog house in the middle on the other side. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at that. Okay. okay, yeah, I'm looking, maybe you can clarify, the rear elevation I'm looking at, there are two doors, besides the doors to the deck. That's, that's the door from the basement. Oh, okay, Cause, but it looks like you're going to need a couple of steps or something. Okay. <laughs> or not. That's actually... <laughs> Okay. Uh, Mr. Piccarelli, if we simply approve this, but with the provision that driveways will be put to the side of the structure rather than as shown on the plan, is that enough for you? Or do we we should put something about the side. Are they coming off the front of the bump out, or are they going to the side of the straight straight? Two separate driveways going to Franklin driveways. Street. That's what I'm envisioning. Two separate driveways. Right, going one to, two to each side of the house. On the side of the house. Yeah. Okay, you don't need something further from us to. Okay. Okay. And sufficient for. I mean, obviously, if you have a driveway, it's going to have plenty of parking. But it's going to be 50 feet anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah, but with at least two parkings. I, I assume you probably make it a fairly. You wouldn't make it like. 20 feet all the way, you probably just put the parking and then narrow it. I'll make it nice with the turnaround so we can. Right, right, right. And then you'll just have a walkway going to the front door? Yeah. And a walkway to the front door, yeah. That way you don't have to put something on the side of the house. Which would. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that would, that would be very convenient to do that. Okay. Any further comments? Um, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah. To approve with okay. the conditions you already discussed. Yeah. And what what do we have to prove? Just the special permit, or was there also a finding needed for this? Um, uh, it was existing. Yeah, special. Could I put it into the minutes? Um, no, sorry, looking at the wrong seven minutes. <laughs> Is it just it's just a special permit? Because otherwise, it's all. Meets all the uh, requirements. Is really, is that right? Yeah, it meets the setback requirements. Just a special permit for a two-family. Okay. Uh, all right, so it's a motion for a special permit, uh, as shown on the plan, with the uh, one change being that there are to be two separate driveways from Franklin Street, one on each side of the house. Right? Is that captured? Yeah. The um, driveway has to be 15 feet from the neighbor's driveway on the left. Yep. Remember that. Yeah. So is there going to be two curb cuts? Two curb cuts. There's no sidewalk there. Um, yeah. John, we also need a uh, variance for the <laughs> lot size because we need 22.5. And, and slightly under. Right. Yeah, 20,000. Okay, so also a variance from the uh, lot size requirement. Is that how you want to handle this? I mean, now that the house is down, it's probably the right way, but. If the house was still there, you wouldn't need to do that. You'd make a determination. It's replacing the existing. Yeah, well, you'd not in kind. You'd need a variance in the way. Yeah. Because if you go with if you go with the eighteen thousand square foot one, you're going to need a variance from looking like a single family dwelling. I'm sorry, what? Is it like you said? Depending on on which way. Yeah. You go, the since conversion of an existing is, dwelling, it, it's supposed well, it to. It was illegal too. It was illegal too. Yeah. Right. So if it was illegal too, they already went to the Board of Appeals. So you wouldn't need a finding. This board said, okay, you could do it. And then they never did. So that's right. why they're back now for the special permit. Yeah. So I think the special permit's all they need. But 
If you want to call our variance, yeah, I variance. would. I would make it a special permit for the two family and a variance in the lot size because of it being under A eight. If they were, well, and the house has been torn down, so yeah, and yeah. If the house it's, wasn't torn down, I, would I think say. you're better. You're better off giving you the variance. So there's no question about the legal status of it. I think. Okay. All right. So that's this the, still my motion stands. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stands with the two driveways. Okay. Second by Mr. Blaws. All in favor? 5 0. I can't buy the house now because I own it. Yeah, I'm going to What are they working on? Excuse me? Work hours are they working What are you? I'm going to leave this. We don't want that one. 77. We don't want that one. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. the house. That's the worst part. No. No okay, so we Thank you. All the days, no Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 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 My son was this in over to the Tory. Oh, yeah. Portable property. Yeah. Nice oh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so nice. I have here in front of the oh, Gilbert Board. Thank you. Okay, John. It's all a give and take. Thank you. 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 Uh, we have some minutes. All right, let's uh, let's whip off these minutes and. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, I'm gonna I'll go in numerical order. Minutes for case number eighteen, which was two fifty Stetson Street. Uh, that was myself, Wayne, Dick. Jim and Bob Perrin. That's a gay rod with the uh, motion. Move, yeah. That was a garage with accessory apartment for Dennis Smith. Uh, who made the motion? I did. Mr. Perrin, second. Wayne, second. Wayne, second. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, case number 19, which was the first hearing on 74 Franklin Street. Motion approved. Uh, Wayne. So a motion by uh, Wayne, second by Bob. All in favor? We'll figure out who's. Thanks. Who. <laughs> uh, number 20, 645 Plymouth Street, which was the uh, renewing the, uh, the permit for the uh, accessory apartment. And oh, those nice people that came? Yeah. I'll, I'll do that one. All right, moved by Mr. Bloss. Second by Mr. Cohen. All in favor? All right. And the general minutes for December 11th? Motion approved. Moved by Mr. Chandler. Second? Second. Mr. Kimball. All in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, well, well, first, the next... So February 26th, we have a new case at 7 o'clock. What, is, what does that involve? The new case? Uh, 159 Auburn. 159 Auburn. Is that a duplex? Yeah. I think a duplex. And uh, then the continuation of 870 Temple Street will be at 730. And we have nothing else. Our, is that um, on the... Um, it's on the Brockton side of... No. Okay, it's down. It's... Heading for Washington Street. Yeah, when you go off right, Washington, it's, it's a little so ways it's, down. It's not the industrial section. It's between no. between Harvard and okay. what's the yeah. uh, side street there in, in that oh, stretch? Cool. Newland Drive. Newland Drive yeah. between oh. Harvard and Newland Drive. Right. Okay. That was a little house. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. raise it. Is that take Pat that down. Pierce's house? Huh? Pat Pierce. Pat Pierce. Okay. Um, I'll be back around the 15th of March. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind if we. We don't have anything else yet scheduled, but I'll keep that in mind yeah, for that. I'm going for a month. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. John, John loves to have uh, meetings at the so end of the month. He doesn't move. Have move by Mr. Flaws. Second, Second by Mr. Chandler. All in favor? No, we never, we never do this. Meeting is adjourned.